Uh, perfect. Thank you, Terry. So the first thing we'll start off with is um, call to order and welcome, and we'll start with the roll call. Um, so I'll begin. Uh, President-elect Carly Scarborough. Secretary Terry Lawler. Treasurer Marissa Daly. Central Rep Gloria Moreno. Uh, MPLA Representative Amber Kent. MLA Councilor Liz Garcia. All right, thank you all. So now we'll go down to board reports and presentation of and approval of minutes, Terry. All right, was everybody able to take a look at last month's minutes that I sent by email? Then do I have a motion to... Real, oh, I just have a question. So uh, Lisa didn't attend the meeting, but there was still a... President Lisa Lewis with a report, and I'm I'm sure she emailed that. But does there have to be a, like a notation that that was emailed and that she wasn't at the meeting, or is it just enough that she wasn't? Uh, I will fix that because you're right. There should be a notation that she wasn't at the meeting. Okay. So I'll fix that before I finalize it and upload it. Okay. Any then, other changes? With those changes, I'll make a motion. There's no other. Okay. Did I spell everybody's name right this time? <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now motion. <laughs> All right. With the proposed changes, I make a motion to approve last month's uh, minutes. Second. I second. This is Liz. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Moving right along. So president's report, like I said, Lisa had a work conflict and isn't able to be here, but she did want me to just follow up with a few things. Um, so in her report from last month that she emailed to Terry, Wade Stevens, who was the husband of Louise Stevens, um, who was a librarian here in Arizona, and we have a scholarship in honor of her, he passed away. Um, and some family and friends had reached out about making donations to the Louise A. Stevens Scholarship Fund in Wade's memory and we have received $1,050 in donations. Um, one family alone sent $500. So uh, Lisa has sent thank you cards to all of those individuals. Um, and we're, I don't know if we received any more checks, but we'll keep an eye on that. And then we will work to uh, with Casey Van Heron. She worked with Louise Stevens and we'll work with putting uh, together a, a memorial for Wade at the annual conference in October. Um, Lisa, myself, and Marissa met earlier this week, and Lisa had an update on the ASEAN track grant. So we've been waiting for a while to send the money back to them that we, we have to send back, and that should be resolved in the next 30 days. We're very hopeful that we'll finally get that grant closed out, and, and that way our financials can actually reflect how much money is in our accounts. Um, the new division, Health Sciences, was approved at the last meeting, and it looks like Nita Maylander is here. So I'm going to just put her on the spot and ask her to just introduce herself real quick um, and just maybe describe a little bit about what Health Sciences is and wants, wants to accomplish within our organization. So Nita, if you don't mind. Sure. Hi. And I also have uh, Sydney Abram. I'm going to mess up your last name, Sydney. Sorry, Sydney and David. Sydney's with Mayo Clinic and David is with the U of A Phoenix Biomedical Campus. And they're both officers of our, what is going to be our formerly cable group, which was the Central Arizona Biomedical Libraries. And I've just kind of been the go-between between, between uh, you all, Lisa and, and the group. Uh, but we were a small organization and we were kind of suffering under some of the uh, accounting and tax regulations. So we were kind of looking for a new home and you guys have uh, welcomed us with a, a new division and we're still working through, I think we've got the bylaws set up and then we're just working through some of the funding for our new members. We're hoping to use some of the former funds that we have uh, to uh, pay for them for a year membership in AZLA. So we're working through some of those details. And David and Sydney, did I leave anything else out? 
No, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cable has existed in some form since the late 1960s. Um, it, we have about 45 to 50 members any given year. Um, so we're hoping to get all of those folks to join AZLA. We know some are already AZLA members, but um, a lot of us, since we work only in the health sciences, in hospitals and things, we haven't been as active in AZLA in the in the past. So. Um, we're, that's why we're hoping to use our funds to kind of get everyone started and get their memberships uh, paid for for the first year. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for being a part of our organization. We're excited to have you and um, to see our membership grow and to have this new division. So thank you all for attending and we look forward to this partnership. Thank you for having thank you. us. Yes. All right. And then the, the next thing that Lisa had or the last thing was just to um, introduce Marissa. Marissa Daly is, has accepted uh, the appointment of our treasurer, and we are very relieved and excited to have Marissa on board. Um, and since she does review of financials, that'll lead nicely into if she wants to just do a little introduction and then she can just take it away. Hi, I'm Marissa Daly. I'm a branch manager at Fountain Hills for Maricopa County Library District. Um, coming up on three years here. Um, and yes, I've accepted the position of treasurer. Um, I don't have a lot as far as the financials that Ruthie prepared for, uh, June. So, um, I've never attended, uh, this meeting before, so bear with me. Um, so essentially all I have are the debits that, uh, she issued last month. Um, are there any questions? I, you know, I got all the mail just two days ago, as far as like the Charles Schwab account, um, and then the general checkbook, I've been working with Terry Lawler to get onto the Chase Bank account, but any questions? I, I don't know where the videos are, but in the old meeting, so you would share your screen and show us the, you know, everything once you kind of get that all together. So, okay. and I think Lisa detailed that in the meeting this week of just what you'll, what you'll present at the meeting, so. Well, I will share what I sent to Terry for June. Terry, I think you'll have to stop sharing your screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes, yes, we can. All right, so. This just outlines the debits uh, that were paid from the Chase Bank account, um, invoices, but essentially that's all I have for June from Ruthie. Okay. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you so much for being here. And I promise I'll it. be better next oh, month no. when, <laughs> when I've done it. Marissa, I just have a quick question. This is Liz. Um, yeah. Are you, you're getting the mail, right? I emailed you about the uh, conference uh, reimbursement. Uh, are you waiting to get on the accounts? Yes. So I okay. actually have access to Chase Online. I did get your emails as okay, far as your perfect. reimbursements, um, but I just got the mail and everything two days ago. So oh, gotcha, gotcha. Been okay. checking, been checking also with um, Carly and Lisa to make sure that everything that comes through is valid. Okay. Um, because there are a lot of emails that are fishing yeah. and stuff. So yeah, just making sure everything I pay or everything I look at is, is a valid vendor is something that we're supposed to pay everything like that. I totally understand. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Basically her first day on the job, she got an email scam asking to transfer 20,000 out of our account already. So it, they were really quick. <laughs> so, um, and she very smartly knew that that was probably not something we would do and, and alerted Elisa to it, Lisa to it right away. And we were able to have that taken care of. So um, and then our mail is still going to go to Prescott and Casey is just going to forward it to us, um, to Marissa. So it's probably not a perfect situation, but until we figure something else out to do with our physical mail, um, that's going to be the process for right now. It's going to be great. Yes. Everything will go smoothly. I have all faith. I did just want to add one last thing to, uh, Lisa's president report real quick was just, um, we did all do an email vote to approve her going to Washington, D.C., um, for the IMLS award for uh, Bisbee's Copper Queen Library. Um, and so she will be attending that event. 
All right. Up next, we have our ALA counselor, Liz. Hi, guys. So I attended um, ALA annual, obviously. Um, we had three council meetings. There wasn't a lot that went on. Um, just kind of reviews different committees uh, in those council documents. I didn't get a chance to write the report this week. It's been crazy. Um, but we did vote on some stuff. One was to create a new roundtable having to do with makerspaces. So if anyone's interested in makerspace roundtable, that is now a roundtable through ALA. So that was approved. Um, the training committee, we approved a name change and the charge of the training orientation leadership development committee. So that's now that name. Um, it was a big discussion on uh, making sure that school librarians and academic librarians have representation in ALA because historically it's been mostly public librarians. So we're really trying to beef up the recognition and the communication with different states um, have different school library associations. So to make sure that the ALA counselor is uh, making sure information is going back and forth so we can get them more involved in ALA. And I don't believe we have a separate association in Arizona. We're kind of unique. We don't have one. We just have the division here. So what I report on, they, they get every month. Um, Emily Jabrinsky, uh, the now past president, asked for a, a robust discussion on the future of ALA. Um, <clears throat> There is new a new director of the finance. They're doing final interviews for the new executive director um, in August. So we'll have a new ALA director hopefully at the end of August. Um, ALA is kind of in a financial crisis. They're operating um, in the red. So they're trying to figure out how to operate in the black. Um, and future leaders, how are they going to do business to make this happen? Um, and how are we playing a role in policies surrounding AI? Because it's so involved right now. So we're looking at AI very importantly. And more engagement with small tribal libraries. We're trying to get them more engaged in ALA, which with, will impact us here in Arizona. And the public perception of ALA, sometimes it's not that good, especially with everything with book banning and stuff going on. and and. Emily said, you know, personal comments that she made were taken out of context to have people challenge ALA. So she apologized for that. I don't think she really needed to apologize. People really told her she was, you know, it was a private post and we really shouldn't have put that against her. So I'm in a, I'm in a meeting. So um, some announcements were the Joint Librarians of Color is having a 2026 conference. So if anyone's interested in that, I can forward information, but it's up on their website. And the final registration numbers for ALA were um, 7,901 attendees. That was 115% above their target rate. So it was really a robust attended conference. And with the vendors, the total registration was 13,445. The vendor hall, I, I don't know, Gloria and... and uh, uh, Carly can tell you was there was a lot of vendors this year. It was really robust over Livelorn X. Like there was maybe four times as many vendors. So it was it was really robust vendor hall. So we got lots of information if you visited. And um, I will write this report up and put it in the Google Drive for everyone to have. But that was ALA. And I attended uh, a couple programs, obviously. Um, the one that was really cool was a pre-conference on building and redesigning your library or um, remodeling. So they had, so I have uh, information on that if anybody anybody wants, but that was a really good program. So. Yep, that's all I have. All right, thank you so much, Liz. Yeah. Oh, and Emily obviously is is no, she's past president now. And Ray Pun had run, run and won president, but he had to step away from, due to health reasons. So Cindy Hull, who was president-elect, moved into the president spot as per the bylaws. And we're having a meeting in two weeks about what to do with the president-elect position. So they have an executive board to review and we're meeting on July 23rd to have a confirmation vote on that new person. So. Wonderful. Now that's it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yeah, we had a great time at uh, ALA, a few of us kept running into each other. So 
and uh, Liz and myself and Gloria sat at the closing session. So we had a fun time. All right, MPLA representative report with Amber Kent. Hi, so this week we had our MPLA board meeting and they are getting ready to send out the application for the next Leadership Institute, which is held in Colorado. It'll be in May, uh, the beginning of May. It's like the fourth through the seventh, I think, um, in Estes Park as usual. So that application will be available in August and it will run through the first week of October. So I'll be sending that information out, that application to all of our members. I would encourage anyone any of you who know some MPLA members, I'd encourage you to ask them to apply because it really is a really great program, that Leadership Institute. Um, and then the only other thing was the, they are changing their membership management software to a product called Nailer, which they said was something that not a lot of library associations use, but a lot of other nonprofits use. So I don't know much about it but they will be moving things over from member clicks to nailer soon. That's all I have. All right, great. And our state librarians report with Holly. Sorry, I was just typing a question to Amber. Do you know who the facilitator will be for that leadership? Is It used to be Maureen Sullivan, didn't it? Yes, and she has a conflict this year, so she won't be able to make it. It is Jamie LaRue and Sandy or Sandra something. I can't remember her last name. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had the same problem. We we were hoping to have, have uh, another leadership institute here in Arizona, and she was not available for us either. <laughs> so, okay. Well, Jamie LaRue is a great facilitator, so that would be good. Um. All right. So I did not get a report in either because I've also been traveling like Liz. Um, so I was at a conference prior to ALA with the Western Council, which is the library, state librarians from the states that are west of the Mississippi. And um, one of our main topics of conversation was AI. And we all talked about the challenges that we have in common um, some of those are working with IT departments and getting policies in place. And um, all of us want to be able to, to put out training to libraries and to help with um, seeing the positive sides of AI while being very cognizant of the pitfalls. And so um, we are part, in, in Arizona, the State Library is part of a multi-state project where we are working with David Lankas and other state libraries and the um, the initial months have been spent um, just getting a real picture of what's going on across the country um, and what the problems are. And, and again, what I just said is what, what has been found. And so now, um, then the problem, uh, the next problem was that what they wanted to do was to be able to create a petting zoo of products for the participating state libraries to try out, but that has been problematic because um, again, the concerns about security and um, trying out these different products on our networks and getting our networks infected or something. So, um, so they're creating what they're calling a sandbox, a place to log into and try the products, um, hoping that that will be more secure for this um, for these trials that really need to happen. So um, I think all of us have AI top of mind and I know that you all are like me, that you open your email and there are so many different webinars <clears throat> that are available right now, so much discussion about AI. So it really is an important topic. And then this past week um, or this, this week that's just concluding, um, switched topics completely. And I was in Washington DC with our um, Assistant Deputy Secretary of State Murphy Abair, and we were attending a convening of the um, the National America 250 Commission. That it was not the commission itself, but um, but Rosie, um, who is sort of the like the executive director, and 
coordinator. And so it was representatives from all the different um, states who we were coming together to talk about what is being planned in our different states for the 250th observance of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And so um, that's coming up in two years. It'll be here before we know it. Um, and there are, are different states are at different places in their planning stages. Here in Arizona, um, the first meeting of the commission will be on July the 22nd. And um, Secretary Fontes has been appointed as one of the members of that commission. Um, the other members determined um, have been notified and invited to the meeting. So um, in listening to all of the states, it seems that we're, everybody is, is really thinking in terms of local celebrations, um, not just statewide celebrations. And libraries will be great places to, to have celebrations and will also be great places to be sources of information as people are researching our history. And one of the things that they stressed was that this commission is a congressional commission. It's not a presidential commission. So it is not partisan in any way. And it, um, it will not change, things will not change when um, after the presidential election. So no matter what happens, things are just continue, the work will continue. And um, another point that uh, has been a point of discussion is that not everything in America's history is positive. There are lots and lots of things to celebrate, but there are lots of things that um, are just realities that we need to face, uh, talk about and learn from. And so that's another important theme. And I think libraries can be very helpful in these discussions that need to take place in telling America's story that, um, that it's depicted accurately and that we face up to things that were not so positive in, in the history. And so to that end, um, I think we've mentioned this here before also, but we're working with Arizona Humanities on a project um, about telling stories related to our country's history. So um, I think, um, oh, and I'm I will, um, I've also been invited to attend the medal ceremony in DC and I'm looking forward to, to doing that. And I didn't know Lisa was going, so it'll be even more fun to do it and <laughs> to be there. So, um, I know that Donna's on the call. Donna, are there any workshops or anything in particular from the State Library that you'd like to highlight? Um, I can't think of anything. We don't plan a lot of heavy hitters during the summer, but we do have some webinars, the Niche Academy webinars and such. So, Okay, thank you. And Megan is on annual leave this week, so that's why she's not with us. So um, I think we're done, unless anybody has some questions for us. Well, thank you so much for that report and thank you for all of your support. The more library associations I talk to, they don't always have a supportive state library. And so we are very appreciative of all you and your state libraries, uh, librarians do. So and I'm glad you get to go to Washington DC and yeah, Lisa will be there. So you guys get to celebrate uh, Jason and his, his staff. Yes, thank you. So before we jump down to web services and division reports, um, Marissa does have to leave and we do have an action item. And if she leaves, we won't have a quorum. So if everybody's okay with us jumping down to that action item, that would be wonderful so that Marissa can, can get out a little early. Um, Terry, if you won't, don't mind, um, I'll share my screen. So our action item is um, we do need to expand our wild apricot uh, service. Right now we're on a professional plan, which allows us to have 2000 contacts in our system. And we currently do not have space for all of the Phoenix Public Library staff that just recently added an organizational membership. Um, and so it is going to cost us more money, but it's a, a good problem to have. I did have a uh, lunch one day with the California Library Association president 
and their membership is at 1200. Um, and so we have actually surpassed the California Library Association membership needing to go over 2000. So I thought that was a huge kudos to Lisa and to the board. Um, three years ago in 2021, our membership was down in the 300s. Um, and so it is really impressive to see the growth in our organization. And that is definitely kudos to all of you who have reached out and encouraged your staff to join um, and have done these organizational memberships. So uh, Terry, if you stop sharing your screen, I'll share mine and just show the cost breakdown. Okay, doesn't, I can't, I just put it on multiple share because it doesn't seem to stop sharing. Okay. For and so let's try now. Okay. Is everybody seeing my screen? No. Dang it. Always something. That's okay. I can just go over the pricing. It's just, um, so there is a, a two-year 15% discount and a one-year 10% discount. The two-year, although it's a higher discount, it is nominally more that we would pay a month for that. And so we're asking to just increase. Um, right now we're billed annually and we pay um, about 216 a month. That cost is going to go up to $396 a month. So I would. So I would like to make a motion that we increase our wild apricot monthly price um, from 216 a, a month billed annually to the 369 a month billed annually. Do I have a second? This is Amber, I'll second. All right, I have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. The motion carries. So that kind of segues into Tina's report. So now Tina can increase our wild apricot subscription and work with Marissa to pay that difference. Um, and like I said, so that puts us, I think into, Tina can give a more accurate number, but I think we're over 2,200 uh, active members in ACLA um, once we get the Phoenix Public Library system in our, uh, in our wild apricot. So, and Terry, again, thank you for that. Um, your team, when we met with them, they gave you tons of kudos for bringing that forward and finding a way to have all of those staff members, uh, AZLA members. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I'm jazzed about it. Like I've been asking for it for ages and they're like, we don't have any money. And then we got a new interim director. So he really is the one who gets credit. He was like, let's look through all the couch cushions. Let's talk to finance. Let's make it happen. So um, yay us. Yes, um, yes. How many, how many members did you say we have total now that i um, PPL is added on. I missed that. I, you guys were over 400 and we were right at like 1800. So I think it's putting us, I think it's putting us at about 2200 members. Tina can get a more accurate okay. um, number, but I think it put us at about 2200 active members. So, Excellent. and you guys Thank are sending a, a quite a number of people to conference, which is really exciting as well. Yeah. All right. So Tina, you're up next with the web services report and Marissa, if you need to head out, we'll, We'll see you at the next meeting. All right. Does anybody have my report to share or do I need to share my screen? Uh, I think you can share your screen if you'd like. Well, I can try this. What are you seeing? Good to go. Your, your report. All right. Um, I won't go all, through all the details. Just been really busy um, cleaning up, fixing stuff, membership stuff, uh, website things. Um, I did do a data transfer from the old website. It basically comes off in a HTML coded document. It's like 300 pages long. Um, so we have it saved. It's in the admin drive. If anybody ever feels the need to go read it, um, it's there. If you need to pull the data, it's there, but it's not fun to play with. Um, Please remember to look at the committee page and if there's anything missing, you want stuff changed, um, let me know. I still need headshots from board members. I think Glory is the only one that sent me a picture yet. Um, if we can get those, I can get them on the website. 
Um, and though I wanted to mention that the numbers that <clears throat> she was discussing for our membership numbers, I've spent a lot of time archiving and deleting dead accounts. So I want to say that that's a pretty accurate number of active people or people who are real. And so that, you know, a lot of times you get num names and information in these systems and it just keeps loading, loading, loading. Uh, but we've cleaned up enough that I think it's an accurate number. Um, sorry. Please remember to use the ticket system. Um, it's on our contact us page now on our website and click on that ticket. It'll send the ticket to me and then I'll be able to keep track of what I'm working on. And, if you have any questions or concerns, please remember um, PackardT at azla.org is the web, webmaster email for me, or you can do webmaster. Um, any questions on the report? No, I think that's everything. Okay. Um. All right, so Tina will work with Marissa to get our Wild Apricot subscription increase and get those Phoenix Public Library staff members added. Um, she did also update the school library um, email. And then Nita, you should have received an email with the Health uh, Sciences Division email. We did. I don't know what to do with it yet, but I have it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, if you need any help, as Tina said, just email her at Packard T at AZLA and she can help you if you get locked out or if you need to create any kind of listservs or groups or anything. So gotcha. We'll work with her. Tina, expect an email. Perfect. All right. Moving right along. We're going to go down to committee reports. Uh, Jean, you were in the email about the school library was changed. Um, the email was changed. So I'll make sure that Thought that went to your Gmail. All right, so we'll go on to committee reports, professional development committee. Hello, this is Diana. And we had a June webinar, Summer is Upon Us, Extreme Heat Preparedness in Arizona. About 101 people, I think, were registered. We had 50 attended the day of and have had 75 YouTube views since then. And I do believe the group that presented is also using that as kind of um, the, on their own, too, like sharing the YouTube video as something that they've done to, to share the word about the extreme heat preparedness and what the libraries are doing as part of um, cooling centers and whatnot. Yesterday, we had Law for Arizona, Empowering Libraries Through Legal Reference Training. Um, I'll have the numbers on that and everything in the next meeting. And our July committee meeting is being postponed to August due to lack of um, committee member availability in July. So that is the Professional Development Committee. And we have a full schedule for the rest of the year actually planned out. And then we'll get more after conference, too. Wonderful, great, great news, great thing to have. So thank you so much. All right, conference committee, uh, Terry, it says Carly Scarborough, but Corey Tuller is here and she will be presenting on conference report. Hi, thanks. And Carly, you can jump in in case I've missed anything. Um, but conference planning is going smoothly. Um, the program committee reviewed over 70 proposals and worked hard to kind of choose the, the ones that might be, uh, you know, uh, most appropriate for this year's conference. And they are in the process of sending out um, notifications to those people that were accepted. And so I'm uh, expecting in the next uh, week or two, uh, everything will get um, solidified. There are some people that have had to rescind their proposal. Um, but we will have a, a schedule ready um, and on the website, which I've already started building, but is not visible yet, um, to show people what to expect and hopefully um, trigger a lot of interest in attending the conference. Um, our numbers so far are um, not very high for registrations, but that's to be expected because we're just barely into the new fiscal year. Um, and I know a lot of people do need the schedule to be submitted when they put in the requests to attend. So um, that will hopefully be up within the next couple of weeks. Um, 
We do have the pre-conferences. Um, uh, we have a full day and two half day options. We have a uh, regular registration for conference. We have 12 exhibitors so far um, and space for more. So if you have vendors that might be interested, please send them um, to the site and we'll get them connected with our conference planner. Um, and we also have t-shirts uh, that are for sale through State 48, um, which I think we've sold maybe about 20 so far. They're gonna be picked up at the conference. So you're pre-ordering and paying now, and then you'll get it um, when you check in at the conference. And so that should be pretty exciting to have everybody um, hopefully maybe changing into those once they get them and uh, you know, it'd be a good photo op. Um, the service award nominations are still open. That's another one that usually takes a little bit of time for people to make their decisions about who they wanna nominate and get that in. But I do encourage all of you to consider um, who you might wanna be nominate as well as share the information with your teams and staff members and encourage people to consider nominating. Um, uh, and the information about the service awards are also on the website. There's also that Louise A. Stevens scholarship um, as well, which is a separate link, but all the information could be found under that service awards page. Um, but uh, we're going to have a meeting in a, just a couple of weeks with EDI committee and MMO because they have some really great ideas on ways to make the conference um, even better this year with some um, you know different things going on outside of the normal schedule. So uh, look forward to having those conversations and appreciate the hard work of everybody, um, Carly and Lisa and Kurt, our conference planner, as well as the um, committee co-chairs that are working hard. So um, it should be great. Uh, anybody have any questions? Um, you know, feel free to reach out via email. And Carly, what did I miss? Anything? I think that's everything. The only thing I was going to add in the conference portion was since Gloria and Debbie are here, I know Bob's not here, but maybe our reps could meet and draft an email to send out um, like I said, this conference, we're really highlighting, trying to get more people. We have these 2,200 members and we want them involved in our committees and our divisions and um, especially on our board. Um, shameless plug, we don't have a uh, president elect yet. so. <laughs> Um, and so I thought maybe uh, because Thursday at lunch and then Friday morning, we were going to give divisions and committees and board members an opportunity to sit and have like a, a lunch. We were going to designate tables um, and have, you know, northern rep, central rep, southern rep just at a table where people could come and sit and talk with them. Um, and then uh, Friday, we'll pass the gavel and have new board members introduced and outgoing uh, board members recognized. And so maybe central northern and southern reps could draft an email of just, hey, come meet with us at conference. And as we get a little bit closer, just, you know, so people are aware of that that's what we're doing at this conference is really highlighting the divisions and committees um, and reps that we have in our organization because people, especially new members, might not necessarily know that they have a representative that comes to these board meetings and votes for them um, or brings issues to the board that are important to them. So. Yeah, I think that sounds great. And just from the what I've seen so far of who's going to be presenting, I see a lot of new names and faces that I'm not familiar with. And so it'll be a great opportunity to yeah. um, encourage and invite Absolutely. participation. Absolutely. Yes, that um, I did talk to the California Library Association president and I said, you know, that's where we're um, finding a little bit of difficulty is not having a lot of people actively involved. We have 2,200 members, but we need to get them involved. And he said the, the young people are where it's at <laughs> to get uh, students or just new members and, and have them show them what we are able, able to do. So thank you, Gloria, uh, for saying that you'll do that. And I appreciate it. Otherwise, I don't have anything else for conference and we can go down to MMO. All right. Well, I am um, presenting on behalf of Aaron, who's traveling today. Um, our big news is we've actually finalized our first newsletter, which was part of last year's strategic uh, planning session. That was one of the goals we wanted to accomplish was to create a members only newsletter. So that <clears throat> is finished. And then Vanessa is going to work with Tina to get that sent out uh, and added to the website. And um, I did have a question though, did anybody from the board want to review the newsletter before we send it out? Erin reviewed it after I 
uh, you know, added the content that you guys all submitted. Thank you for submitting your articles, everyone. So it really makes it a member-driven um, newsletter when everyone submits different things. Uh, so does anybody need to review it before I send it out? Carly, Lisa, do you guys want to take your eyes? Do you want to have your eyes on it before we share it out? Um, sure. Go ahead and just send it to, to both of us and we'll we'll look at it. OK, great. And then I just want to encourage everyone to submit new articles. Be thinking it only comes out quarterly, but you guys can submit articles at any time. And if we don't have space for them, you know, we'll just save them for a future article, uh, a future newsletter. So if you see something that a library is doing that's really amazing, um, or a library staff member that you really want to shine a light on, you are welcome to submit the article to the newsletter. So we'd love to get more content like that. And things like board reports. Um, I think the more people see what the different committees do and the different reps do, the more likely they are to get involved. So. I really tried to use this newsletter to recruit people for the future. So hopefully that will help. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. We're just helping the conference committee with a few things like the um, uh, photo session for uh, professional photos, as well as the resume review clinic. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right, Amber with the nominating committee. We don't have a whole lot other than what Carly said. We really need someone to run for the office of president elect. So if you're thinking about it or, or if you know someone who would just be great, encourage them to sign up. We do, we actually don't have any, um, it's really no contest. We only have one person running for each of the other positions also, which is okay, but um, it is nice when you have a choice between multiple people. So, and we're still looking for other candidates. We extended the, the call for nominations through the 26th. So uh, there's still a couple of weeks. And so if, if you're thinking about it, or if you know someone, you could try to talk them into it, give them a nudge, and maybe that's all that they need to give them the confidence to apply. So that's all I have. I am doing a Q&A. I've opened up like a, just a Zoom meeting next Friday from 10 to 2, where I'll just be in Zoom. And if anybody would like to be president-elect but has questions or reservations, I, I will be open to meeting with them um, and answering those questions and just letting them know what president-elect entails, kind of what the job, you know, I know a lot of people get worried they're taking on too much or can they um, can they be flexible with work? So. I know I had wanted that in the newsletter. I don't know if it's going to go out in time. Um, and so I don't know if that, if we'll send that out in a separate email, but I do have a Zoom um, Zoom meeting open on next Friday, the 19th from 10 to noon. Perfect. Could you send me the link to that personally and I can share it with Phoenix Public? I absolutely can. Thank you. Of course. Or maybe send it to everyone or maybe put it in the chat. I will. Oh, everyone could share. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I can send an email afterwards too, but that's the Zoom link. And so that's Friday, July 19th from 10 to noon. And I turned on like the meeting room. So I'll just let people in as they come in and just, like I said, um, so uh, hopefully, I'm hoping we get enough uh, interest that maybe someone will want to come ask and take on the role of president elect. Okay, advocacy committee, Erin McFarland. Good morning, everyone. So I have a couple of updates. The first one is that we are now the advocacy committee as it was voted on by the board. So if you have on any of your listservs or things you're sending out stuff to legislative at azla.org, please update that email address to advocacy at azla.org. I still have access to the old inbox um, and I can't, Tina, at some point, you and I can connect, but there's, 
I'm really struggling trying to get, I just want that one to forward to the new one, but every time I try to do it, it says that it can't connect to our server. Um, the Gmail, I don't know, isn't able to connect to the server. So I do still check both, um, but if you can update your stuff to go advocacy, that would be awesome. Um, so I wanted just to highlight, I did send this to the board, but I wanna say it in the minutes of this, that the governor did veto SB 1007 on June 18th. Um, we're not sure still why the Senate did not send that to her desk to, until two months after it passed through the Senate, um, but she vetoed it and she wrote a veto letter. Um, and I can share that she wrote, oh no, that's the one that we wrote. Um, I don't know. I mean, I can share what, I'll just read it to you because it's short. Today I vetoed Senate Bill 1007. The legislation is an attack on public schools and public libraries and does nothing to protect minors. So we do have an ally in Governor Hobbs. Um, and I also wanted to share, because I think this is re very relevant, that over the course of that legislative session, AZLA members and allies sent 3,992 emails in opposition of SB 1007. The work that we're doing is important and you're doing it well. That's a lot of emails that went out to our legislators to let them know loud and clear what we want from them. Um, and so we're gonna continue to fight any oppositional legislation that comes forward. Um, you know, After this election, we'll elect new um, House um, and Senate representatives in Arizona. So we're gonna see a shakeup um, as the makeup of that the legislative um, body will change. Um, but we'll continue to build relationships through our lobbyists and through us and our organization. And I also encourage you to do that in your community. So if you have um, legislators that you've started to build relationships with, continue to invite them into your library to see the work that you're doing. Because um, a lot of this work happens outside of the legislative session when they're really seeing what libraries are doing in their communities um, to fully understand um, the work that we do. So... Um, I, when, once I get the lobbyist group does send us a full summary and wrap up of the legislative session. I haven't received that yet. The legislative session, um, let's, I forget what the exact term is, but they adjourned. There you go. Adjourned sine day on um, June 19th. And I just haven't received that from um, Pivotal Policy yet. But as soon as I get it, I will send it out. Um, also, I did um, attend ALA and in San Diego, and I sat on a panel presentation um, representing the Arizona Library Association's legislative, um, is what they call it with ALA, state legislative chairs, um, to talk about the past legislative session um, and the work that we've done. So it was me, and it was the legislative chair of the or the president of the New York Library Association um, and the chair of the um, School Library Association's Legislative Committee for Kentucky. So it was an interesting kind of blend of what different people are doing across the, or different organizations are doing across the country legislatively and what some of those sessions look like. Um, so also I wanted to ask, um, through that state legislative chairs group through ALA, ALA has an initiative for the fall. You might have seen it already called Reader Voter Ready, which is a mouthful. And I keep calling it Rover because that's what it just looks like in my head. So they're using the hashtag RVR on social media, but they've created um, some gifts for the state chapters. Um, let's see if I can. Can you see my screen? So it says Arizona libraries are reader voter ready. Um, I can share that with um, Donna with the MMO committee. And if you're interested on sharing that with um, through our social media outlets, is this something that you'd be interested in? Maybe she left. I'll send it over and see. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, I, I'll share anything you guys want me to share. I don't okay. make that judgment. You guys share it and then I'll use buffer to post that to the AZLA account. Okay, so how does the board feel about that? Are you comfortable posting this? It comes from ALA and the point of the um, initiative is just to get people who are library users out there voting. We're not saying vote one way or the other, but I think it's important to get as many people engaged in the process this fall. And we definitely want people who use libraries and value the work that we do um, to be voting um, in the ballot box in the fall. Um, so, there's this, and then I do have copy that I can also send um, 
that just, you know, getting resources out to engage your community. They have a lot of toolkit. They've got a lot of different stuff available. If you are interested at your library um, in taking part in this initiative, it is a um, partnership with the League of Women's Voters, which a lot of us already use. Um, and there's a lot of interesting ideas around it, like taking the League of, Win of Women Voters um, election education handbook and scanning it and putting it into Overdrive or Libby so that folks can access that digitally if they're interested. Again, just sharing resources, not saying to vote one way or the other. Um, and then National Voter Registration Day is September 17th. So they're encouraging folks to participate in that as well. Um, I'll send that over to MMO as long as the board is comfortable with us sharing information like that. I am. I don't know if anybody else wants to weigh in. I think it's great. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure before I sent that over, if it did come out from ACLA. Um, I guess those are all of the updates that I had that came out of this. I don't think there's anything else. Oh, I'm very excited as well. Um, I talked to Carly about this at ALA, um, that we have a pre-conference on advocacy. So if folks are interested, and I'm also super interested, we have these 2,200 members now in getting folks to you know come and be active on a committee. Um, and I think that having that pre-conference available will help. I'm also doing a session at, um, at AZLA where I can talk about you know the work that we're doing. Um, but the more the merrier. And if you have people on your committee that are interested in policy work or advocacy um, and the work that we do at AZLA to support libraries across the state, then please send them my way and uh, we can get them you know, kind of you know, working and stuck in on this. I know sometimes it's hard because there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Okay, any questions before I move, we, I let Carly move on to the next person. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much, Erin. Um, yes, important work. I've done a lot of advocacy stuff in uh, the last couple of months and it is it is important, especially just before the election. So hopefully the conference is timed well where anybody wanting to get involved um, will we'll meet with our advocacy committee and hopefully Erin can get more people on advocacy committee. <laughs> <laughs> instead of just the single person that is on it. So um, so new business, we already did our action item and it, um, approved our wild apricot expansion. So I also just wanted to do a quick conference recap. AZLA paid for me to attend the um, chapter leaders forum on Friday, which was an all day event. Again, just another great opportunity to meet with other library association um, leadership and talk about what works, what doesn't work. We talked a lot about conferences and speakers and who's doing what for conference hybrid and in-person and um, and then just talked about advocacy and what we're seeing in our states. And so it was a great session. Um, and then I, I attended a, some other advocacy sessions. There was a lot on intellectual freedom at this year's ALA, a lot on advocacy um, and a lot on civic engagement and community engagement, which our library that I work for is under our division of community engagement, which is kind of weird, but it um, there were quite a number of sessions that were um, applicable to our library's role at our institution. So that was great. Um, I can send an official report to Terry. So that's part of the minutes. I didn't get that written up, but I will send that to her. Um, and then, so we'll just jump to the last thing and keep going. So clarification on posting of minutes with Terry. Um, so this was just uh, for my own benefit. So we had this email that was flying around about um, us posting minutes within 72 hours after the meeting on the website per um, our law, our, our per state law. Um, and then we um, came to, I think, and I just wanted to clarify, we came to us um, uploading the um, recording of the minutes onto the YouTube and just posting the link. Is that where we finalized or do I need to um, start sending out this, the action items or the minutes or like, is there something else I need to do? And then if I am in charge of posting on the YouTube channel, I needed to clarify that, that that's me that I'm doing that. <laughs> it makes it easier for you. Um, I already had all the files downloaded to my computer, so I went ahead and posted them all to YouTube and linked them to the website. Um, if I just know the file that they're in or I have access to the file, I can keep posting those. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Then I will make sure that I post them on time because I'm usually a little bit lazy about posting that because it never went anywhere before. So um, I usually get it like right after the meeting within an hour, I'll get a Zoom link um, saying that you're, uh, that it's ready. And then I upload it into the file eventually. Um, so I will make sure that I do that like right after the meeting then. So then uh, we should be able to post that within the same day of the meetings going forward. Perfect. And then for the, for the actual minutes, we will continue as is. I will present them to the board um, sometime before the next meeting for approval. And then we approve at the meeting and then I post them after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think right. we have that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just want to, yeah, I mean, I just need, I'm like, I need to know if I'm in charge of things so that I do them. <laughs> okay. That's all I had then. Thank you. All right. Well, that's everything I have. Um, Donna, if you saw in the chat, Tina shared the, um, all of the AZLA emails. We'll work on getting you the other information from your question about the listserv and, um, Committees division listserv emails, as well as the committee chairs. I think the committee chairs should at least be on the website by name. I believe Tina updated that. Um, yes. We'll have to get with Nita to get the new health sciences committee chairs um, and get that division updated on the website. Um, but I think otherwise that information should all be on the website. But um, Don, if you want to just reach out to Tina and I'm not sure what listserv we have Google groups, which we've kind of used as listservs in the past. We're trying to find a way to merge that into wild apricot so we can use wild apricot to manage all of those. Um, but as of right now, we just have our AZLA uh, emails. I have a couple of questions about yes. the new health science division. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like uh, the chairs and things usually run conference to conference. Is that true? you will appoint or elect or however it works, somebody at the annual conference? Correct, yeah, yeah. So our fiscal year is actually like October to September and or like October to October, our annual conference is the conclusion of our FY and the start of our next. And then the president elect, I believe in our bylaws is the one who appoints new chairs, um, but it's on the basis of whoever wants to serve in that chair role. Um, and so, yes, correct. Okay. Um, did I hear that the listservs go out using Google Groups, That's, not Wild Apricot? So that may be wild, a problem. Wild Perhaps Apricot is still through Google. It still uses okay. our Google. I don't know for sure, but a lot of hospitals block Google. I know. So we, we might have issues with some members with that. Um, my other question was, so we're hoping to pay for individual memberships for people at uh, across probably 30 different institutions. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can do that? Who do I get in touch with to, to work that out? Tina, our uh, admin web services coordinator will- Tina can help with that too. Okay. Yeah, I don't, um, I have to get clarification from Lisa. She kept saying organizational membership, but that's not how we do divisions because you're not part of a single organization. So right. we'll have Correct. to just get a, yeah, a list. Yeah. And then in we just want to pay on the initial for everybody. Right. So it wouldn't be organizational. Right. And I just sent Tina an email and CC'd everybody on it. Sydney and David and Karina's on here too from Creighton uh, to get us started. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Yeah, please. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, myself, Lisa or Tina. We're happy to answer all the questions that you have. Um, but yeah, I think in Wild Apricot, we'll have to create the new health sciences division and then assign all of the members that you would like to add to that division so that um, that allows us to email to specific divisions. But again, it is um, it is through Google, which we find like the Phoenix Public Library had us whitelisted and they're like, they weren't getting our emails and they had to, we had to talk with their tech department. And so I don't know of, um, we can research some other avenues maybe. And we're working on just getting a list of our members who want to kind of port over. Yeah, so we'll work on that too. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for attending. Thank you for your questions. 
Um, thank you everyone for your reports. I hope you have a great weekend and a, a good month of July. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions or comments or concerns and have a good day. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye.